missing some video but I set the top of the swim step on in caulk or sealant um, I laid a bead down every piece of aluminum and then set the top on it without clamps and then after it was uh, cured then I came back and drilled and tapped some holes just to make sure it doesn't move but I didn't want metal on metal I wanted a cushion type feel and it uh, came out well I have a situation you see how close the bottom of the boat is to that forward rectangular tube um, it can't hit it when the boat's on the trailer but when you're um, putting the boat on the trailer and the back end is floating up a couple of inches it does hit it so uh, I need a bracket and of course they don't sell one or they didn't sell one at the store I went to that was the right size so I'm making a bracket to hold the roller so I have this piece of heavy galvanized angle and cut it in half and then I'm cutting the corners off of it just so it won't be so lethal when you happen to be walking around the trailer or walking through the trailer um, and then I had to drill it for the axle which is 5 8 so that took me three drills I drilled a quarter then a half and then the 5 8 and then I drilled two half inch holes just to bolt it to the um, to the frame and then I welded it together with a little um, channel separating the two angles and that's to keep it from like flopping over sideways since I only have one bolt in the frame on each side and then I put it together and put it on the trailer and uh, just bolted it up it went uh, pretty good so we got the little fabrication where I want it I got it pushed up a little bit there's a little weight on it just to, enough to dent that roller a little bit I got it clamped so now I get the pleasure of drilling two half inch holes through that uh, square tube laying on my back um, I'm gonna try to go with a quarter inch first and then with the half and I got bolts and plate washers and hopefully I can go in once and not come out again and I got a piece of foam to block the Sun so I don't cook under here so wish me luck you pretty much can't see this in the video, but the drill seemed to be connected to my left leg. The harder I pushed on the drill, the higher my left leg came up off the concrete. Pretty uh, interesting phenomenon, but it was uh, <clears throat> consistent with bo both holes that I drilled, so must be some sort of, uh, I don't know, scientific phenomenon or something. I bought a new roller to replace this thing that's just worn out and I got to looking and this whole thing is all kind of jacked up. This strap should be level with the uh, eye and this should be right above it. Now I'm going to try to drop this down to um, get the strap level but then I'm going to have a conflict between the strap and this. This is too narrow anyway to fit this new roller so I got a feeling getting ready to do some cutting and welding but uh, i want to do that before the sun comes up you uh, know runs me off so i lowered the u-bolts from here they're crooked right now to here that gets my strap pretty straight um but that messes with the wheel the wheel needs to be right here and now i have a conflict with these things they're not wide enough so i'm going to amputate these right here and uh See where we can go from there. I may make it even a little bit lower because that would make it easier to get the wheel in place. So I'm gonna get the grinder out and do some cutting. So I trimmed these two pieces off the original bracket because they were hitting the roller and then I went to my junk pile and found some galvanized stuff. I think that was off a trailer, a boat trailer, and I got it clamped where I want it. So I'm gonna it's going to be hard to get this off without moving these clamps because this thing's pretty heavy. But if I can get it off without moving it, I'm going to go ahead and weld this and then cut this dog leg off. I don't need that. And then I think it's exactly where I want it. Uh, the winch strap is level and it will pull up until the, uh, the eye, whatever you call it, the front bracket hits the bottom of the roller and then you'll know you're in the right spot every time. So, All right, sounds easy, but I'm going to try to get this bracket off without moving the um, clamps. Okay, so I got my extenders put on and I even got them bent out a little bit so they'll fit the uh, plastic roller better. 
and I uh, TIG brazed them. I didn't weld them because all this old galvanized. I'd have to grind half the metal away to get a good weld, but I got some good TIGs. So I'm going to uh, spray a little cold galve on here and put it back together. And I might even beat the sunrise coming over that building, which would be lovely. Okay, that project is done. Not the biggest project in the world, but it should make it a little easier to get the boat back on the trailer safely. And with that roller down there, and this improved, pretty good improvement. Now I'll be looking for a chain and a hook to replace that pull down strap. And the best thing about this project, I beat the sun. You see the, I'm in the shadow, it's hot in the shadow. It's ridiculously hot as soon as that shadow leaves. So good stuff this morning. So I want to add some rod holders under the gunnels in the back part of the boat. And I've been looking at rod holders for like 60 years. And then I look at this blank sheet and it's like, I have no idea how they're made. So I played for a while and I got this template out of plywood and I like the shape. Of course, all these outside corners would be real rounded over. So I'm going to make them out of scrap fiberglass sheets doubled up. So two on each side. So one, two, three, I need eight. I need eight of these just like this. So I got four cut out. And this is a uh, fiberglass, so even though it'd be plenty strong enough, it's not very uh, aesthetically pleasing. And I won't be able to round the corners enough to uh, keep people from bashing their shins. So I'm gonna double them up and glue them together, and then I can round the corners more. You can probably still bash your shin, but maybe it wouldn't cut you. And I think they would just look better. So the next four I'm cutting opposite so I can have a, a gel cut on uh, each face when I glue, after I glue them together. Okay, four pairs rough cut and paired up and ready to glue with epoxy. Got the backs all sanded clean. That would be a, make a pretty good glue joint. Not many action shots of building these things because my third little box camera bit the dirt and I'm doing it with my phone and I don't have a holder for my phone here at home. But anyway, I clamped up the four pairs um, yesterday. I'm going to take the clamps off and I got a lot of grinding and sanding to make them pretty. Now, so now they're roughly shaped. Did the inside curves. I put them in the vise and using a file. And I did the outside perimeter with the belt sander clamped down to the table. So now this is pretty rough. On the inside, I'm trying to make a flap wheel that will go to smooth this and so I took a half inch bolt, I cut the head off and I slotted the other end and I slid some pretty coarse sandpaper up in the uh, up in the joint and I'm gonna put it in my drill press and see if this won't help me sand all those little inside curvy pieces. And it actually worked. Now here I'm holding it with holding a piece with one hand and holding the camera with the other hand, so it was kind of Yankee, but um, when I put my phone down and I could push hard on it, it uh, removed the metal. It made a pretty good little flapper sander thing. The sides of the hull, inside of the hull where these uh, rod holders are going to go is curved. So I went and put this in there and scribed it with a space and a pencil. And it's a different curve at the back than it is at the front. So I'm going to need uh, to cut two of each of these and try to keep them straight. Which one's which? I got the front curves and the back curves marked on the uh, rod holders and I'm going to cut the curve but I'm going to leave some little, some little tabs sticking out to better lock this into the backing plate so it won't just be glued on there. It'll have a little bit of a mechanical joint. So I'm going to go cut these and then I'm going to have to cut four backing plates and we glue them together. Okay, so I got the back side of these four cut and I took the grinder and roughened up the little tongue a little bit but, so I could get a little bit of an extra mechanical bite. And I got four backs marked out. One, two, three, one on this one. So I'm gonna go cut these and sand them. And then I'm gonna cut little notches where these little tabs are and uh, I'm gonna glue them up. We got the four backs cut and I got them marked and they're all a little different so I got them numbered. Now I got to cut these square holes. So I think I'll drill a hole top and bottom 
and cut what I can from the front and then flip it and cut the rest from the back with the grinder. You don't have to be super exact because it's going to be an epoxy joint. So, should have these glued up in the next hour. This is awesome. Cutting those rectangular holes was surprisingly easy. That's, I did what I said. I drilled a hole on both sides and cut this side with the grinder. And then when you turn it over, you could almost see the cut where you needed to cut. So uh, it's glue time, man. This is going to rough. Okay, got all four of them all glued up. This one wanted to not glue up, but I had to use more clamps than the other ones. But they're all glued and fitting well. And when the epoxy dries, I'll sand them lightly and put a good fillet all the way around. It's hard to do that with uh, the clamps in the way. So one more glue after this, so it won't be being installed until maybe Tuesday after tomorrow. So I don't know if there's a right and a wrong, but it looks like 50 inches works okay with my rods and it should work with a dock line boat hook and a gaff and a, probably that's all that's going to be here. The rods will probably be in the other rod holders. So I'm going to boat and see what we got. So lots of showers today so I won't be able to glue but I do have the um, little deals laid out where I want to put them so I can grind the paint and then clean that up and then figure out some sort of bracing to uh, hold them up against the wall while the glue dries. So I'll do that. That'll be a couple of things I can take care of. So I got some adequate holder uppers. They're a little awkward to get going, but once they're up there, they hold well. Uh, it's gonna rain hard, so I'm not gonna glue them. If I glue them, this plywood would get soft in the rain and they would fall down and I would wake up and my rod holes would be glued to a floor. So best we wait. Rod holders epoxy to the hull and then caulked around the perimeter with that marine sealant caulk and then painted and they look pretty good. Still need some bungees to keep uh, things from jumping off of them. And I'm gonna have to look at some other boats and see how they do that. But uh, happy with this little project so far. So when I built the console, I decided not to have a built-in seat on the front like a lot of them do because this is not the biggest boat in the world and when we fish we like to have two ice chests one for fish one for food and drinks so the food and drinks will be under the leaning post it fits the same size ice chest as this this one will be here as a seat and an ice chest and we will put a cushion on the as a backrest against the console um, but I got one issue here um, can't open the top unless it's like this far out. So problem is how do you stabilize it without tying it tight against the uh, console? And I got a couple options. One, I could put those little square receivers on the deck that you can buy, or I could make them where the ice chest kind of sits in them. But then I'm thinking the only way to really secure the ice chest would be to pull it straight down So I could put these little things in the floor and you could tie something to them, a bungee or a strap. But I don't really want anything else in the floor. And I don't want to put a trip hazard in the floor so when we're not using the ice chest, it'll be just sitting there. So I think I'm gonna put some sort of brace in the back, not on the ground. If I put it on the ground and then tie straps, it's gonna to wanna to rotate. We need to be up some. I'm gonna put some sort of brace where I can strap the ice chest back here where you know already got something to tie it to but it'll keep it out of the ways where we can open the top real easily um, so that's what my little project is for this morning to figure out something that's not too obtrusive that I can remove it doesn't have to, I don't want it to be permanent it doesn't look like garbage um, so that's it got to figure out something shouldn't be too hard This is what I have so far. I cut a little short piece of that old mast and I cut these pieces out of it. And I did have to whack them with a hammer once or twice to get the curve really good. But they fit really well on the back corners. So now I need to connect them together um, 
Not sure what I'm gonna use as normal, but first step done. So I think I'm filming. Okay, so I've got these little corners that fit pretty well. I can make them fit better. I've got this angle iron and I think I'm gonna cut this flange off of it and weld this together. And I think I'm gonna fix this permanently to the ice chest and then have some sort of attachment between the ice chest and the hold off. Um, this won't hardly add any weight at all. And it fits nice and snug. And with a few little um, sheet metal screws and maybe a little caulk, it should be very sturdy. So I'm gonna go outside with the skill saw and cut out what I need over of this piece. So with the hole saw, I drilled four little round pucks. With this hole saw, I happen to have the right size, believe it or not. And then I drilled a half inch hole in the middle for these long bolts. And now we gotta clean the edges so that they'll fit inside these tubes. They, <clears throat> so they'll fit inside these tubes. They fit perfectly, except for a little flange that kind of, except for this little flange that didn't really drill, it just kind of broke off. So we'll do a little cleaning up. I'm gonna slide them in there and do some welding. So, now I know this is a little hard to see, but I took one of the plate washers that I made and I welded it in this end and it's sanded flush. And then I welded one in the other end, but it's recessed the same thickness as this bolt head. And I welded it and then I couldn't weld the stainless to the aluminum, but I could put enough melted aluminum around it so it can't turn. So this is my standoff and I can put a nut on this side and I don't have to worry about the bolt turning. Uh, hopefully, I don't think it'll turn. Okay, so we're all painted up. Looks pretty good. And I've got some uh, grease on the threads so that the um, caulk that I'm gonna put the plate washers on with won't stick to the thread. So I'm gonna go put this in the boat and uh, I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, little bracket is on. Um, it looks okay. Probably doesn't need to be stepped on. So if I'm ever running around without the ice chest, I'll probably take it off. And on the inside, it's simple. I got a bolt there. I got a bolt over there. I got a plate washer made out of some fiberglass and it is uh, bedded with caulk. So it's not gonna come off. It's there forever even if I decide not to keep the um, support for the ice chest. Just wanted some extra strength because this is uh, foam with not a whole lot of uh, glass on the back side. Okay, it fits. I'll need a bungee or a strap or something to pull the ice chest back. But I shouldn't have to strap it down to the floor. And my ice chest does cover this floor hatch, which I wasn't crazy about. But um, the only thing down there is a bilge pump and it will have the batteries for the trolling motor why not get a trolling motor so it's not like i got to get in there all the time but it's far enough back where i can open the ice chest without a problem i need to change these latches these are the worst latches ever now i need to measure for a seat back cushion i will cut a square of fiberglass and have it upholstered and we'll screw it in place Okay, I got a semi-permanent solution to keeping my um, little plexiglass door from bouncing around. I got these bun bungee cords. I'm sorry about the shaking, I can't help it. And they do awesome. But, I don't know, it seems like bungee cords are not a permanent solution to anything on a boat. And the ends are not stainless, they're just um, plated. These are Home Depot cheapos. But man, is it, it really holds it. 
but it really holds the tops and hug so i like that um and they're cheap you can get 10 of them for like four dollars and 50 cents so i guess i could just change them every year or so when they start going bad so all i had to do was cut one end fish it to a hole and tie a knot in it and i put a drop of epoxy on the knot so it wouldn't come untied and i ran a screw up through the bottom to hook it to and i cut the top off and i put a drop of epoxy on it to keep it from coming out so um that may be all i'm going to do forever and ever we'll see so forever and ever didn't last long i'm, I'm cutting them off i'm try something different um you have to cut the hook off of one end to get the bungee through the little hole that i drilled in the uh, plexiglass and the first go around i just tied a knot on the end because that's all i needed but this time i'm going to put a new one through there and i'm going to put the hook back on it and i'm going to tie a knot to keep the hook from falling off so now i have a hook on both ends of the little bungees and i'm going to show you what i'm going to do with that i think it's going to be work out pretty good so I'm drilling and tapping a pair of uh, quarter by 20 bolts in the main frame up here and listen closely. Stop record. So you heard that? I can start and stop my new camera by talking to it which keeps it from getting covered with epoxy and paint. It's a very nice feature. So my new system here is like the old system in that I can latch it closed but then if I open the um, lid and slide the hooks the other way I can latch it open with the same little bungees and earlier I said they were um, 10 bungees for like four dollars and fifty cents but they're actually 20 bungees for like four dollars and fifty cents so um, I know I can't get a latch cheaper than this and I think they're gonna work okay if the uh, bungees hold up more than you know a couple of weekends if they don't last that long well, they're not gonna be worth the trouble I think they'll be okay and once again I'm gluing together two sheets of the scrap fiberglass um, it's in the middle of this mess and I'm making the support for the seat back that's going to go right over the ice chest and here it is after the glue dried it's slid a little bit during the clamping process so I gotta trim the edges again but I have a nice weather impervious back um, I would prefer treated plywood it's so much easier to put the fabric on but I don't have any more and I had this so I'm gonna clean this up I'm gonna put some anchor points so that I can fasten it to the um, console and I'm gonna glue some foam on it I'm gonna bring it to my little guy who does the upholstery and he'll make it pretty and we'll put it on the console and for anchors I use these little brass uh, threaded inserts this is so I can get a quarter by 20 bolt from the backside after the uh, fabric is on so in spite of the boat being finished we haven't taken it out because it's just been too freaking hot it's not pleasant so instead we've been doing some foundry work like it's not hot next to a furnace full of molten bronze but anyway you gotta take foundry work when it comes and sometime this afternoon I've been told I'm gonna get my um, chart plotter in the mail so you know what's happening on the next video we're putting it in thanks for watching